Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. Today, I'm finally back with a new What's for Dinner. So I'm finally back with a new What's for Dinner let's see how many weeks ago two weeks ago I had a best of what's for dinner so if you missed that be sure to check that out those are our family favorites from the first quarter of this year and then I was planning on coming back and having just a regular what's for dinner the very next week however we have been in works with um, a roofing company and the insurance trying to get everything worked out to where we can get a new roof we desperately need one and that all came through and the roofing company said great we're coming out this week so I couldn't really film that week. So I took a week off. It just so happened that that fell on the week of Good Friday and Easter. So it just made sense to take that week off, but I'm back. I'm excited to be back. I've got three really great meals planned. This first one we're having for lunch today, and it's an Instant Pot meal. And I would imagine you could make it without an Instant Pot as well. But y'all know I've recently fallen in love with my Instant Pot. If you've recently watched some of my older videos where I was like, I'm not gonna touch an Instant Pot. <laughs> that changed and it took me a while once i got it to get confident with it but now that i'm confident with it it's like my best friend in the kitchen so we're going to be making a really quick and easy lunch today but before we get started with that lunch i did want to thank butcher box for sponsoring today's video you know i love them i've worked with them for quite a while i think i've gotten four or five boxes from them now and we don't plan on stopping we love butcher box let me tell you why ButcherBox delivers high quality meat directly to your door. So you're gonna get 100% grass fed beef, free range organic chicken. Their pork is raised crate free. So it's humanely raised and fed only vegetarian feed with the exception of milk protein. And speaking of pork, their ButcherBox bacon is sourced from heritage breed pigs and it's uncured, nitrate free and sugar free. And they also have wild caught seafood, salmon, cod, scallops and haddock. I mentioned that this is our fourth or fifth box. I believe this is the first time I did a custom box. I've always just done a curated box that they offer, but this time I chose to pick out each cut of meat myself, and that was pretty cool. We are especially excited to cook the filets. We've never had filet mignon from ButcherBox, and I'm sure, just like everything else, it's gonna be amazing. If you are worried about price, you really should go check it out. It is an unbeatable value. It's an average cost of less than $6 per meal, and that's amazing, especially considering how high quality their meat is. And ButcherBox really is caring about our animals and our planet. They are improving the livelihood for farmers, and that all means better meals enjoyed together. So here's how it all works. ButcherBox sources from farmers and fishermen who meet the highest standards for quality. You choose your box and delivery frequency. They have five different boxes, four curated box options, which is what we've done in the past, as well as their popular custom box, which is what we did this time so that you get to pick out exactly what you and your family love. ButcherBox ships your order frozen at the peak freshness and packed in an eco-friendly 100% recyclable box directly to your door. It's amazing, we love it. It really does help take the guesswork out of dinner. Number one, you know you're getting high quality meat, but number two, you've already got it. It's already frozen at its peak freshness, so you just thaw it out when you're ready to cook. It's amazing, I love having this in my freezer and not really having to worry about getting any meat when I go grocery shopping because I've got it at home already ready for me. If you've been watching my videos for a while and you've heard me talk about ButcherBox before, you know that each time that I feature them, they have a cool deal going on. And right now, if you use the link in my description box, if you are a new customer, you're going to get a package of chicken breasts, pork chops, and ground beef free in your first box. Okay, now let's get started on the first meal. Oh, before we do, let me show you something. Do you see that? I'll take you more close up in just a minute. I found this antique, like vintage, I don't know if you call it antique, but vintage bread box at a local thrift store for $15. This exact bread box is on eBay for like $35, $45. I've seen it even more than that. I was really excited. It was just randomly sitting there. We brought it home. It had the smell of someone else's house on it. So I wiped it down with a vinegar rag and I set it outside for a couple of days just so it would kind of get the smell of that person's home out of there. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, it smells just fine now and it's got all of our bread in it. And on top of it, I made some banana bread. So there's banana bread up there, but 
We love it. I love the addition to our kitchen. It reminds me of my grandmother's kitchen. She had a bread box, not exactly like this, but it was a wooden bread box. And when I saw it, I just thought of my Nana. So I had to have it. Okay, enough talking. Sorry, let's get to the dinner. This is the Instant Pot Bruschetta Chicken Pasta. Okay, the first thing I need to do is prepare the topping or the bruschetta. So I've got my glass bowl here. I'm just gonna be putting everything in there. I'm gonna chop up, let's do the basil first. Everything is gonna go into this bowl, so I'll just go ahead and put this on bottom. I only need about a half a cup of diced red onion, so I will not be using this entire onion. I don't know why I ever think it's okay to chop up an onion like this when I have that onion chopper. I'm like, oh, it's just half a cup. I don't need it. Yeah, I'm already pouring water out of my eyes. <laughs> I wasn't kidding. Okay, I've got three cloves of garlic that I'm gonna add to our bowl. The recipe calls for about a pound of Roma tomatoes. I've already washed these. Okay, now that we've got all of, our, all of this chopped up and in there, before I start to mix it, I'm gonna add in about a fourth a cup of olive oil. I'm also gonna add in some salt and pepper. And I'm gonna squeeze some lemon juice over the top. Okay, that is everything for the bruschetta topping. Now I'm just gonna mix this up and just set it to the side. Okay, it's time to assemble everything in our Instant Pot. I've got about one and a half pounds of chicken breasts that I have cut into pretty much cubes. These are about one inch pieces. I'm gonna put these on the bottom of our Instant Pot. Okay, I'm gonna make sure this is in a single layer. If you just heard a doorbell, that is not somebody at our door. That's just what our alarm sounds like when you open a door. <laughs> now I'm gonna put a teaspoon of Italian seasoning over top of our chicken. I'm also going to season it with salt and pepper. Now the recipe calls for three and a half cups of chicken broth. However, I don't have quite the full amount of pasta, so I'm just gonna do about three cups of chicken broth. And we've got bow tie pasta. It calls for a pound. This is only 12 ounces. Okay, this makes me nervous that not all of it is submerged in the liquid, so I am gonna add just a little more broth. Now let's pop the lid on. I'm gonna turn the knob to sealing, and we're gonna pressure cook this for four minutes. Okay, it has been the four minutes. It just went off. We're going to do a controlled quick release. I've never done this, but basically I'm just gonna let the air out a little bit at a time. going to give this a stir and kind of combine everything. If there is too much liquid still on the bottom, I'm going to turn it to saute for just a few minutes to kind of get that liquid off. Yeah, there is a good bit of liquid still on the bottom, so let's turn the saute function on. And I'm just going to kind of get that liquid to 
steam out of there for a few minutes. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes. I'm gonna turn the saute function off. There's not nearly as much liquid as there was. Now we're gonna add in our bruschetta topping. Let's mix that around. And I also have some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna add that in. And we've got it turned off, but I am gonna just put the lid back on there just so everything heats through. It's a very formal lunch. It is a very formal lunch. Got these bow tie pasta. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of flavor in here. Mm -hmm. Very light. Yeah. It reminds me of like a Capellini Pomodoro type of uh, right. pasta. You don't even know what this is called. No, it's very bright. It has lots of... Uh, Put some lemon juice in there. Yep, okay. Olive oil, basil. Basil, yep, okay, I got it. Yeah, it's really good. I like the sauce of it, it coats it really well because of the, the bow tie pasta. Yeah. And that's really good. Great, I'm so excited. Mm. So he was not in there while I was making it. He had no idea. Mm. Cole, you say yes, for sure? All right. Okay, let me give this a try. Well, y'all, this is amazing. It does remind me so much of Capellini Pomodoro from Olive Garden. Just the the topping, the way it is. The tomato with all of the basil and the lemon juice and the olive oil. It is so incredibly good. Okay, y'all. Yes, I'm in the same outfit. It is now later in that same day. We had lunch. It was really good, but it was high carb. We're going to go with low carb for dinner. I am making a broccoli cauliflower rice chicken casserole. Okay, to get started, we've got to cook the chicken. I've been preheating the oven to 400. So while the chicken is in the oven cooking, we'll prep the rest of the ingredients. But I'm just gonna put them on this baking sheet. And I did cut my chicken breasts in half just so that they would cook really quickly. Now I'm just going to drizzle a little olive oil on top and just kind of spread that around. And we're gonna put some salt and pepper on top. Now these are gonna go in the oven for 20 minutes at 400. So for the recipe, you need two bags of 10 ounces each rice cauliflower frozen. These are 12 ounce bags, but that's okay. And then you also need a bag of steamable broccoli that's frozen. So while our chicken is in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and cook these in the microwave, cook these in the microwave per the package instructions. All I'm gonna do once they're done is just make sure all of the moisture is out of there so we'll drain them. Okay, let's take the broccoli out. Okay, that's going in for six minutes. So while I was over here grabbing a bowl, I wanted to show you really quickly. Here's the bread box. When I found it at the thrift shop, I was like, oh, do I paint it? What do I do? But I decided I really love it. So it's got our bread in there. Oh. You know, bread box has a bread in there. Yeah. yeah. Gracie Lou, tell them you already had cheese. Right done. We're waiting on the second bag of cauliflower rice, but we're gonna go ahead and dump this one in and we're gonna add in our broccoli. I've got two teaspoons of salt in here, two teaspoons of onion powder and two teaspoons of garlic powder. 
Now we're gonna add in our mozzarella cheese. We need three cups of shredded mozzarella cheese. And we're gonna add in our two tablespoons of butter. Stir all of this together and we're also gonna add in our cut up chicken in just a second, but we're still letting it rest over there. Okay, let's chop this up or kind of shred it. Okay, now that we've chopped this up, let's add our chicken over into the riced cauliflower. Okay, you know what else I wanna add, babe? Nope. Some anti-no-nos. Yay. And what about some red pepper flakes? Yes, no, maybe so? I don't care. Uh, oh, anti-no-nos. And let's do a little crushed red pepper. Okay, I've got a large baking dish that I'm just going to spray with some vegetable oil. And we're gonna transfer this over. Lastly, we're gonna add on about a cup of Italian blend cheeses. That's it, this is gonna go back in a 400 degree oven. It says for 50 minutes, but I was reading the reviews and people were saying you don't need to bake it that long. So I'm gonna check it after about 30 minutes and see what we think. Really good. Very good low carb option. Great flavor. I'm glad you added the uh, the extra bit of anionos. The the chicken's really tender. Uh, I think it's perfectly seasoned. Awesome. It's really good. Very light. Good deal. Mmm. Get that cheese in there now. Mm -hmm. I love that. Y'all, this is delicious. It's very comfort food like, but without the guilt of the comfort food that. It normally brings, you know, usually comfort food is heavy in carbs, and this is not. I'm really enjoying it. One other thing I wanted to mention is we left it in there for 28 minutes and we went ahead and took it out. So it definitely does not need to be baked for 50 minutes. Okay, y'all, it is our third meal of the week, and you know what that means. It's subby supper night. Okay, I'm gonna be really honest with you. Steven is so excited about this subby supper. Like he's been he's been doing the fast clap. Babe, you need to you need to show him the fast clap. Hold on. Okay. Fast clap. Right, the fast clap. I can't do it. All right, here we go. Ready? Yeah, ready. Got it, got it really. <laughs> it's the fast clap. <laughs> it's not this. No. It's I cannot do it. Hold on, I'll show you. So why is Steven excited? Because it's Korean food. It is called Korean barbecue tacos and it comes from Tia. Tia is from Kentucky. She is 30 years old. She is a hairdresser and a visual artist. She's an only child and she said a lot of her childhood was spent in the kitchen with her grandma learning how to cook. And then as she got old enough to stay at home alone, she spent a lot of time alone cooking and teaching herself how to cook and just having fun with it. Eventually, she started making all of the meals after school for her entire family, and she still cooks for her grandpa today. He is 89 years old and he lives just down the road from her. She said it is one of her greatest creative prides of her entire life. She really loves this one and she knows that we were gonna love it too because it's Korean food. And if you don't know, Steven's aunt is Korean and Steven loves Korean food. So Tia said that this particular recipe was inspired by a um, restaurant in Chicago called Seoul Taco, and it's a Korean fusion restaurant. So that's kind of where this recipe comes from. I'm really excited. I'm gonna take y'all back in time to last night when we were marinating the chuck roast. I'm gonna show you that, and then you'll jump back in and we will cook it in the Instant Pot today.
Welcome back to the third meal that I'm making today. You'll see this, the rest of this tomorrow, but we are marinating this overnight. I'm really excited about it. So we showed you that we had the chuck roast. We went ahead and put it in this large gallon size bag, and I'm just gonna start adding all of my ingredients for the marinade directly in here. I've got a cup of soy sauce. I'm using the low sodium soy sauce. I've got a heaping tablespoon of minced garlic, a tablespoon of ginger paste. I've got two tablespoons of toasted sesame seed oil. Oh, I said oil. Are you proud of me? <laughs> <laughs> trying to be all fancy. <laughs> two tablespoons of brown sugar. The recipe called for a tablespoon of chili flakes. I'm using a half a tablespoon because I didn't want to overdo it for mine and Cole's sake. Stephen would have gone for the whole tablespoon, I'm sure. Okay, the very last ingredient that we need to do is this pear. It says unpeeled, but we're gonna grate this pear in our little cheese grater over here. I just think it'll work really well. So we've got this pear and we're just gonna grate it. I've never tried grating a pear before. Look at that. Okay, I'm just coming in here and just mashing this up really well, which is very easy to do. Pears are so soft. Okay, so let's add our grated pear into the marinade. That's it. Let's close it up and kind of mash it all together. And we'll just stick this in the fridge overnight. I think she said you want to marinate for at least four hours, but you could also do overnight, so. That just sounded like a great idea to me. That's it, folks. It's going in the fridge overnight. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, y'all, so it has been marinating all night long and it smells so good. Here, take a whiff. So what we're gonna do is take the entire contents of all of this and just dump it directly into our Instant Pot and we're gonna pressure cook it on high for 40 minutes. Okay, we've only got about 15 more minutes until this is done. So we're gonna make kind of our Asian slaw to go on top of our tacos. So let me show you our ingredients. She said you'll need a, an Asian salad mix. She said she prefers Taylor Farms, I think is the brand, but my grocery store did not have it. Some sriracha and some mayonnaise, and y'all know I'm gonna use Duke's. Okay, so let's dump our salad mix in here. We're only gonna use about half of this dressing that comes in there. Now we need about a tablespoon of sriracha sauce. and about a half a cup of mayo. Okay, let's just mix this up. Okay, it's done. You can either allow it to naturally release or you can do a quick release, which is what we're gonna do because we hungry. I wish y'all could smell this house. It smells so good. Okay, I was going to attempt and shred this in the Instant Pot, but although it's very tender, it's hard to do in the Instant Pot because you know this twirls around the entire time. So we just pulled it out and we will put it back in there to soak up the juices here in just a second. Okay, over here in the microwave, I have these really large burrito size tortillas. She said to use the fajita size, and I would have, but we already had these on hand and I didn't wanna waste them and we weren't gonna use them otherwise. So I'm gonna heat these up really quickly. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we shredded it and cut it. Some of it was able to really easily shred and then other pieces was, I don't wanna say tough, but it wasn't as easily shreddable. But we got it all chopped up. Now we're gonna put it back over into this yummy sauce. <laughs> all right here we go so it's very large burrito tortilla there but i've already tasted it just a heads up y'all it's good that's mind-blowing wow oh yes spicy yes bold yes rich um but there is just so much going on here. I mean, obviously the flavor of the meat is overwhelming. Like it's just. It's just bold. It's really bold. It's yes. in your face. It's yes. Out. And then with the spicy, or the spicy mayo, Asian. Slaw. Slaw. That just. I mean, like there's just so many different little flavors going on there. You got the the difference in texture because of the slaw, the crunch, and then the, the spicy mayo. and um, But that beef is just incredible. Very reminiscent of the Korean barbecue bulgogi, I guess you could yeah. say is what they call it. Yeah. It's really good. So this is something that you want me to make again? Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Tia, for sending this. Mm. Um, I know I said I already tasted it. I did. I tasted it when I was plating it up. I haven't had mine yet. So I'm excited to have it with the Asian slaw with it. So let me give that a shot and then I'll come back. Don't be surprised if you see this in a favorites video for next quarter. Oh my goodness. This is phenomenal. Steven said if you don't like or if you like bland food, you would definitely not like this. This has so much flavor. It's ridiculous. So, so good. Give it a try. That's going to be it for this What's for Dinner. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check my description box. There's a link there for new ButcherBox customers to get some free stuff in their first box. You're going to get an essentials bundle. It has chicken breasts, pork chops, and ground beef all for free in your first box. Are you already filming? Oh, 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 come over here. Come over here. As you say, get busted. <laughs> when, <laughs> whenever he sees... His reflection in the microwave, he's like, oh, I'm busted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just a tad hot. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. You see him? What'd you get? My new kitchen shears. 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 Scissors. I got scissors. <laughs> so now I know how big a bread box is. What are you talking about? I've always wondered. You didn't know what a bread it, box was. What, what's the saying? Is it bigger than a blank or smaller than a bread box? What's the oh, saying? I forget. I, you, you're special. I'm weird. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can finish opening it so it'll stop doing that. No, I think I, I think I'll let it. Please. <laughs> okay. Take two. That's as fast as I can go. Come on, you do it faster than that. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Why is Steven excited? I'm going to punch you. <laughs> you're going to punch me. Because you're like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you want to taste it or do you want me to? You want more sriracha in it. No. Oh, babe. No. That's enough sriracha. If you want more sriracha, you can add some to yours individually. You're so sad. All right, I'm tasting it. 